That's it, you guys have asked for it multiple times. Time to go through my entire AMCAS application. I'll show you guys when I submitted GPA, MCAT, activities, and all the personal statements. So let's get right into it. What is up YouTube? For those of you guys that are new here, my name is Jason, now a second year med student at GW School of Medicine. And you guys have kept asking me for it. Time to go through my entire AMCAS application. I wanna show you guys everything. I don't wanna hold back, other than telling you guys exactly where I live. So other than that, everything else is going to be there for you guys to see. We're gonna talk through my MCAT, my GPA, the activities I chose, and a little bit of the how I wrote them up, as well as going right into the personal statement. But before we really get into this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to help this channel grow. We are this close, like this close, to hitting 1,000 subscribers, and I can't do it without your guys' help. So without further ado, let's hop right in. So as you guys can see from the very top here, this is my AMCAS report for the 2020 one entering class. So that means that I filled it out in 2020. Again, big headache as far as applying is that it takes a full year in advance. So you need to be prepared for the application well in advance of when you want to start. So let's start off from the very beginning. So I submitted my application on May the 29th of 2020. Typically the application will open up at the beginning of May, allow you to start filling stuff in, and then you can submit in the beginning of June. Due to the, I guess the way the, the month worked out, the submission date was the 29th. Um, I think that was maybe a day or two later than when it was officially open to submit. Um, but one thing I really wanna point out to you guys is that it took just about two weeks. So it was not processed until June 12th of 2020. So the biggest piece of advice I'd have for you guys is to prepare for your application, like I was saying, because you'll have about a month to start filling stuff in, but then you will have to submit it earlier because the later that you submit, the longer that it takes to process. So um, anecdotally, I've heard that there are some students who would, let's say, submit their application in like July, and instead of waiting two weeks to hear back on it to be fully processed and actually submitted to the schools, it took six to maybe eight weeks, which means that you're delayed on secondaries, which means you're delayed on interviews, which means your whole application could just be a wash solely because you applied late. So apply early to give yourself the best footing to get into the door. So we'll keep going through here. Uh, it's really just the rest of my application um, as far as the personal information. So not really anything that you guys should be interested in. Um, little fun fact about myself is that I uh, grew up speaking Russian at home. So that definitely throw in there because well, why not? Um, and then let's keep going, keep going not much more here and then we're going to jump into the actual academic record so i went to in essence three separate universities and we'll just kind of go through that i went to california lutheran university um, there i studied biology graduated with a bachelor's of science so with that uh, it took me about three and a half years to finish my undergrad degree now i did not solely take classes at my main institutions i took classes elsewhere which we'll highlight here so you guys can just see through here. We'll just kind of talk some of the interesting stuff. So within my university, uh, I did play soccer, as you guys can see here. Um, we had to take an athletic course and playing soccer counted as my course. Um, other than that, going into the sciences, so started off with general chemistry my first semester, and that was definitely a wake up call for myself and a lot of my classmates. Definitely a tough class to kind of get into. Another interesting course I took, Intro to Christianity. Uh, that's due to the fact that it's a religious school, I had to take a Christian course. Um, not being Christian myself, it was kind of interesting. It was more so taught as a history type class and I really enjoyed that. Professor was very engaging and, and more so allowed students of different faiths to really come together. I'll speak more on that later in this application actually. Um, but as you guys can see here, I was initially part of the honors program at CLU. However, after the first semester, however, decided it just wasn't worth it for me, especially playing soccer and, and doing a lot of other things. So I dropped out of the honors program, but I did take my one honors course in humanities. And let's just say that was a tough, tough course. Through that, just as you guys can see here, going through the rest of the prerequisites for uh, biology, chemistry, kind of in a unique situation as far as CLU does it. Um, but I took general chemistry my freshman year, uh, which typically doesn't happen for a lot of bio students 
So with that, I got to take organic chemistry my sophomore year. So I was definitely the youngest in the class taking it there, which is an interesting and unique experience. Um, but one of the main things I really want to highlight to you guys here in my organic chemistry lab in the first semester, I got a C plus. That's right. You guys heard that correctly. I got a C plus in organic chemistry and I have been accepted to medical school. So don't let that deter you from medical school just because you have a bad grade. Um, I can show you guys later down this application. How did I talk about it? How did I discuss it? But because of this whole circumstance and knowing that I wanted to go into med school, I really just went straight up to my professor. I was like, listen, like I was not able to really understand and and realize how to study for organic chemistry in the lab in particular. So I asked him like, listen, I have to take part two in the following semester. What do I do? How do I prepare? And the just having that conversation was the greatest thing that I could have done for myself and for my academic improvement. Because if we jump down further here, as we've taken on more bio classes, organic chemistry lab two, I jump back to an A minus in the lab section. So it's not impossible, but coming and spending time with your professor to tell them what your circumstances that you're going through and how you plan to go around it and do better absolute game changer highly recommend so professors aren't these you know very distant people they understand what you're going through make sure to spend the time to talk with them go to their office hours and just chat and and let them know kind of what you're going through don't let it get to the point where i did in that first semester where it was too late for me to change anything get on to your mistakes early and fix them early so we don't end up in my situation of playing catch up so for the rest of the classes i took again all of your prerequisites from biology organic chemistry chemistry your psych and soch um your physics oh, guys physics yeah that one was a doozy um with that just kept going another super cool class i actually took was piano so growing up i played piano and now i had the opportunity to take a piano course um, at my university so that was a great way to get back into it and practice once more um, again and then finish up with the rest of my courses that i needed to take um, and yeah so that bring that wraps up all of my courses at clu but as you guys can see at the very bottom here i took two well, I took three separate other courses at two separate universities, both local community colleges uh, within the area. So I took a English composition course um, that was required as part of the AMCAS application to have a actual letter grade for an English course uh, because I tested out of it from AP and IB classes within high school. So I got a letter grade for that. So I went and took it at a community college, uh, took calculus at a community college, and then took world history at a community college. But here is to show you guys that just because you go to a community college, you're not at a disadvantage. It worked just fine for me. I didn't start my undergraduate learning at a community college, but I did take some courses throughout there. Again, just because you do that does not mean you're not getting into medical school. Please take that into account. So again, just showed some of the more information on that. Um, and then what you guys really actually wanted to see, let's go through GPA. Overall, um, graduated with a 3.86. Uh, very proud of that. Uh, very solid GPA to go into med school application with. My basic sciences at a 3.83 and the all other the 3.91. That's pretty typical for a lot of pre-med students solely because you kind of do better in your non-science classes and your science classes are a lot harder. But again, I was fairly consistent throughout my grades, just very slight fluctuation within it all. Um, again, as you guys can see here, my all other grades were typically a lot better than my science grades. But at the end of the day, 3.86, uh, very proud of that score going into it. So next most important thing that you guys are looking into is the MCAT. So as you guys can note here, I took the MCAT twice. Um, first in March of 2019, there I scored a 506, which in hindsight, I really should not have taken the MCAT at that point because I was not ready. I was scoring between a it was between a 505 and a 510, but again, it was more so on the 505 side of things, but I was not ready to truly take it. I'm glad that I did. It kind of allowed me to, one, understand what the whole testing day process was like. Uh, probably would have been smarter if I avoided it, but again, you know, hindsight is 2020. Um, but let's go through the breakdown of it nonetheless. So 127 for the Chem Fizz. 126 for cars, 124 for the bio and biochem. That just tanked 
me, I don't know what happened in that section. That was typically one of my stronger sections. And again, just, I guess that day was not my day. Um, and then a 129 in Psych Soch. So that first time that I was studying for it, I used the Princeton Review and did their ultimate course. Um, don't know if I would recommend it to others because the second time, as you guys can see here in June of 2020, I self-studied. For this, I properly used UWorld material. I did my Jack Wesson cards every single day. I focused on my Anki cards to make sure that I retained the proper information specifically for Psych Soch. And as you guys can see here, jumped to a 512. So six point improvement by studying by myself. And my highest score was a 130 in Psych Soch. I jumped up in biochem and bio to 128 cars stayed the exact same at 126 and my chem and fizz slightly bump up by one point so that was solely self-studying if you guys are interested in seeing how did i self-study for the mcat i'll leave it down in the description below full video on how i did that so again took the mcat twice and that still got me in i think a lot of students take it twice i'd say that the average is probably Two, to two times to take the MCAT, so don't be discouraged if your first time is not the score that you're looking for. All right, so as we go through, let's start going through all of the activities that I was a part of and how did I kind of come up with them and why did I decide to write about them? So the first activity that I have here was when I spent time as volunteering to come back to be a soccer coach for my university. Uh, there I was working with the club program. It was really just a great opportunity for me to come back and give back to such an amazing program that helped allow me to grow, uh, helped shape me into the young man I am today. It was, it was a great opportunity to come back and really work with, you know, all those that came in to college at 17, 18 years old and kind of help them out through not only school, sports and just life. So it was a great opportunity to come back and help there. Uh, my next activity that I have written down here is my time that I spent working at Amgen. For those of you guys that don't know, Amgen is a biopharmaceutical company located in Los Angeles, California. And as you guys can note here, it is one of my most meaningful experiences and kind of for a few separate things. So after graduating, um, I was trying to study for the MCAT, took the MCAT, didn't do as well, and was lucky enough to actually have had this opportunity um, there for me. I was actually interviewing while studying for the MCAT. So with that, I was working um, in the process development lab. That's mainly prior to drugs really making it out into clinical trials. We're solely just trying to get these proteins proper in proper solution. How do they properly fold? What is the overall purity of it in different ways that we're testing it and running it? So with that, that was my main role. But my most meaningful experience from it was actually an event that I went to, which is part of the Be The Match, in which you had people come back and talk about the opportunities that they had to have their cheeks swabbed and were able to be a match for the bone marrow transplant registry. And this amazing experience really fueled me to get back into patient experiences um, instead of sticking with the lab. So trying to combine it all so that way I can do a lab side, but really see the patients and see how all my work is being impacted. My next activity here is all of the honors, awards, and recognitions that I received. Uh, a tip on this is just kind of write it out as a bullet point just mark the dates and if there's something that's not self-evident then i would make sure to write it so uh let's see for you know dean's list schools understand what that is scholar athlete award um i did mark that it's what kind of entails in it so you know having a 3.4 gpa within an academic year to receive the student athlete award uh second is the uh clara Knopfler jewish leadership scholarship again to promote inclusion for all students and leadership on campus just a little mark there to describe what that is and then for the contact information um, i have it blurred out for privacy reasons but i would mark the dean of your program so i put in the dean of the bio department um, just to have proper person to be able to have contact in case amcas has any questions uh, my next activity is my presentation uh, this was a summer research project that I did in between my junior and senior year. Uh, during that summer, I was given the Allies in STEM grant for research for the summer. Uh, with that, spent the full summer doing research and then following up was able to do a poster. Again, very simple kind of descriptions as far as what the poster is. Med schools know what a poster is, so don't really need to put much here. Even I think that I put a little bit too much information, but again, that kind of is what it is. My next activity is actually a club that I started with two of my other classmates. 
Um, we started the CLU CPR Heroes. It was a club focused on getting people trained in CPR, uh, whether that be with certification or without. So with certification, going through the full steps to get your BLS card. So you have that little card that you know says that you're BLS certified, but it was also for non-certification, so that way students, faculty, professors, whoever was interested in kind of learning the basics of BLS without full certification would still kind of know what to do in certain situations in case they saw someone, let's say, who had collapsed on the ground, they saw someone who was choking, um, what can they kind of do as good Samaritans? So that was a really unique opportunity uh, to kind of become a teacher in BLS. And the next activity that I have here is uh, all of my shadowing. Again, I really didn't do much, and I'll kind of touch on that later as to why I didn't do all that much shadowing. Um, but as you guys can see here, 50 hours. Um, with this, you just kind of need to put the information of the doctors that you're shadowing. Really don't need to put much else, uh, just because med schools know what shadowing is. So my next activity was actually the research that I had conducted for the summer, like I said, from the summer of my junior year to senior year. Uh, so with that, it was actually a most meaningful experience. And so I'll just kind of get into that. But it was, in essence, a project focused on a type of ATPase uh, to see how well we could clone and characterize it. Unfortunately, got stuck in the whole cloning part of it. Um, I pcr that little gene so many times, I do not even want to look at a PCR machine ever again. That's how painful wet lab research is. But because of that opportunity, um, I had a unique experience. The professor I was working with actually became very ill during that summer. And so he was dealing with his own life circumstances. So I wasn't able to get in touch with him on how to do things, how to fix things, what is going on with my experiment. So I actually had to go out of my way, find different professors that were also doing research there, spend time talking with them. How do I do this? What are your thoughts on that? And it was an opportunity to realize that there are so many different other contacts and, and resources that are out there that you know you can't have someone necessarily hold your hand through it all so it was definitely a great learning experience but just an fyi the professor is not doing well um, but again a little bit of a kind of thrown in the deep end can i sink or swim with this research uh, so the next opportunity that i have listed below is actually the time that i spent working at an ice rink kind of during my ochem time i was so stressed and bogged down with it all that i actually went to an ice rink just to go skate during their free skate because of that, I was able to get close with all those that I was there every day with. Um, and so they offered me a job, came back to work at that ice rink, but one of the most meaningful opportunities that I actually had, uh, kind of touched on it very loosely here, was the opportunity to work with the organization called the California Condors. There, it is a group of disabled and special needs individuals who actually love the sport just like I do. So it was a great way to work with them to kind of teach them how to play hockey, how to skate. It was an amazing experience, um, different varying in age ranges, but it was a great opportunity nonetheless. Uh, another leadership experience that I wrote as my next activity is my time as the American Medical Student Association senior representative. So it's in essence, one, the representative for my entire senior class, but I was also the leader of all the other representatives. And if you guys don't know, AMSA is like your big pre-med and even med school club. Definitely check that out if you guys are pre-meds um, as a way to have connections, networks, and different resources in applying to medical school and anything else healthcare related. So highly check that out as a way to prepare for your med school journey. So we'll hop on to my whole time at CLU was in essence playing sports. I uh, played soccer for all three and a half years of my collegiate journey. Um, the first year I was actually on the intercollegiate team. So that's like your actual team. And then the next three years, I was on the club level team, which is your step down from the collegiate team. So again, playing soccer, people kind of understand what that is. But why did I mark this as a most meaningful experience? Because I was very much humbled after my first year. My first year, I did not see the field once. I got this much playing time. And so with that, I had to realize was the time commitment that I've had in soccer really worth it if I wasn't almost seeing the results and I had to study biology and I was stressed over school. I had a very difficult realization that it was time for me to step back and truly focus on a lot of other things. Whereas for prior to that, soccer really made up a lot of my life and, and almost time. So having to take that step back into the club level was a very humbling experience. And I think it was something that I really wanted to show the med schools that I was able to one process and was mature enough to handle situations like these instead of quitting outright no i wanted to still be a part of this sport that i loved that i played growing up so that is how i continued on with it uh, the next 
activity that I actually have is my leadership as the president of Hillel, which is the Jewish club and organization, working to promote the Jewish life on campus, especially at a Lutheran university. Uh, but it was also very instrumental in kind of allowing a multicultural, multi-background opportunity in which we would connect with the Lutheran clubs, we would connect with other Christian clubs, and we collect with the Muslim Student Association, in which we'd all kind of get together, talk about our own experiences, our own backgrounds, and how are we all better together. And now we'll just quickly touch on the last two activities. I hope this hasn't been dragging long for you guys, but I appreciate you guys for sticking through this, so let's keep it going. Um, the next one that I have is my first job at CLU. So if you guys hadn't noticed, I had been working the entire time through undergrad. So this is actually my first job. I was working at the front desk of my dorm room. Uh, there I was in charge of selling candy, uh, renting out equipment, and pretty much helping everyone out with what they needed. Uh, great opportunity to kind of really make me become organized. So I was starting undergrad as a freshman in a difficult major of biology. I was working during this time and lastly, I was playing soccer. So I was a busy guy doing three things all the time. It took up a lot of my time, but I'm very grateful because it really threw me in the deep end and kind of forced me to swim. And now my last experience that I wanna note here is my time as a volunteer. Um, going to medical school, it is crucial, crucial to volunteer. Um, and if you guys can see here, uh, I volunteered at a free clinic and there I really started I believe it was my junior year of high school. And because I went to a university that was close to where I grew up, I was able to continue volunteering. So I volunteered from my junior year of high school through college and then another year after that. So I put it close to eight years of volunteer work at this free clinic. And that's one of the most important things that I wanna point out to you guys is once you find something that is one meaningful for yourself, but also you know is important in the long run, stick to it and grow in that leadership position. So I started out as a little high school supporter. I was really like a nursing assistant in that role. Um, in college, I became a scribe and then I went and got my EMT license and then was a volunteer EMT there. So I kind of understood the whole flow of how everything worked in the clinic. So again, get your experiences in, get more opportunities. And it was actually because of this that I didn't feel like I necessarily needed all that extra shadowing time because I thought this was a great way to allow myself to really grow and see what the role of a doctor is because that's in essence what you're doing in shadowing. You're not really doing big things. You're just like, can I see myself working as a doctor one day? So we'll start from the top. The doctor turned to us and said, listen to the patient and you'll have your diagnosis. I think that this initial statement was one that was the strong point and kind of the theme of my whole application. My theme was one, the volunteering, but also understanding that patients are not just their diagnosis. That's a sum of all of the things around them. So it is their socioeconomic status, it's their race, it's their family background, it's what are their goals in life and what are their goals for everything that they have going on around them. So as we continue on, we'll see that I actually had my own diagnosis. Um, with going into soccer, I was diagnosed with a heart condition, um, which prior to my freshman year, it was a definitely a eye-opening experience in that I didn't know if I'd be able to continue to play the sport that I love so much, the of it all, I didn't know what to do. And so I truly understood what it was like to be in a patient's shoes because I was that patient. I was the one who was getting a new diagnosis, who was scared, who didn't know what to do, who didn't know what resources were around them. That was a very humbling experience for me to realize that what is it like to be the patient sitting at that bedside and, and how can I as a future physician be able to help those patients go through it. Um, and that's really what I focus on here. And I think that in essence, it is summed down in this last statement that I wrote here at the very end. Seeing what a difference human connection makes in healing of patients is the most important lesson I've learned in my experiences. That's what makes the doctor-patient relationship the most unique and privileged one in the world. I hope to achieve that in my practice and to one day be an example to my children and those I mentor. We're all more than the sum of our individual parts. And I think that this last sentence is the theme that I kept trying to hit every paragraph, every activity, everything that I did was focused in on that, which is what you need to do. Make your theme continue on your story because just like medical schools have their own mission statement, you have to make your own mission statement. How's the, how does your personal and the med school mission statement interconnect and how do you find the right school for you? So that's a perfect transition to jump into all of the schools that I applied to. So I applied to 26 MD schools all over the country. 
Um, if you guys are interested in seeing kind of how did that whole application cycle go, leave the link down in the description below so that way you guys can definitely check it out. But I applied just about everywhere all over. So a uh, New York school, California, Chicago, Philly, uh, Georgia, uh, I think this is Connecticut, and you have Dartmouth, you have GW, which is where I'm at. Uh, and then Georgetown, Hackensack, I believe is in New Jersey. You have the brand new Kaiser School in Los Angeles, uh, Temple University in Philly. You have a Loma Linda, which is California, another Chicago school, uh, New York, Ohio, Vermont, uh, Chicago, St. Louis. This is again in Philly, I believe. Then you have Boston, you have Tulane, you have a California school, California school, Miami, Virginia, and last but not least, Wake Forest. So all 26 schools that I applied to, and that is my whole AMCAS application. I hope that this helps you guys kind of figure out what you need to do, what are your next steps, and how do you get on it early. But I'm just gonna wrap the video here. Please, please, please be sure to like and subscribe and tell all your friends about this. You gotta share all this information because there's no point in gatekeeping it. If it's already out here, share it with the rest of the world. So with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one as we embark on the journey of MD in the making. Peace.